So when you import items into Bamboo, they usually default to a Bamboo filament. And if you're using any other filament, they suggest using the generic PLA. So I would get little holes in the light box or little gaps that just didn't make them look good. So we're gonna select this little edit button next to the filament on the generic PLA and see this flow ratio. The generic PLA is always set to 0 0.98, where I change it to 1.02 and 1.04, depending on if it's a dark color or a light color. So this first one, I'm gonna make it a dark color. So I'm gonna change it to 1.02, and then we're gonna click save and rename it. I always name mine Lightbox Dark Color. Then you can hit okay. I already have this saved, so I don't need to do this. So I'm just gonna cancel. And then same for the light colors. Go in here, but change it from 0 0.98 to 1.04. So then you can hit save, name it Lightbox Light Color and then you would save that. And I already have it, so I'm just gonna cancel. And then when you tap the drop down button for your filaments, and then you will see your newly saved settings. That's tip number one for the settings. Okay, tip number two, if you're still seeing a little issues with gaps in your first layer, we can move the nozzle down a little bit and this will help correct that as well. We will click the edit button next to where your printer is located. And then this is what pulls up. And it's basic information, machine G-code, and that's where we're gonna go to machine G-code. And this all applies to the start G-code. So only scroll down in the start G-code button. So scroll all the way to the bottom, scroll up a little bit until you see textured PI plate. The reason it shows the textured PEI plate is because that's the one that is selected underneath the nozzle and the, the printer settings. Do you see that Z negative 0.04? By default, it is 0.02. So then I go back and change it to 0.02 to 0.04. And if it is already a 0.04 and you're seeing the issue, turn it to 0.06 and this should fix most of those issues. All right, and then you can save those out as different settings as well so you can later select them. I already named mine Lightbox, so I know which settings I need to use for my Lightboxes. You can see them all here. I, I even have one for negative 0.06 and negative 0.05, just in case. And that's tip number two. All right, tip number three, go down to the wall generator in your quality tab. We're gonna turn on the wall generator on Arachne and not Classic. And then make sure the wall transitioning threshold angle is 10 degrees and the wall transitioning filter margin is 25%. This will help with all the little fine details if it needs a little, a really tight tolerance or a turn. All right, so that's tip number three. Okay, next we can hit slice and then we're gonna zoom in and make sure it hits all those little pieces. You would see in the G code if it wouldn't, and then you can go back and readjust some settings. But with these settings that we just made adjustments to, you should see them all work out just perfect. And then from there, you can just send it to your printer to print it. When you hit print plate, this is what pops up. It's gonna select the printer that you were most recently on if you have multiple printers. And then you're just gonna select which color is in which spot of your AMS. So my black is currently in port one, my white is in port four, my purple is in port two, and my blue is in port three. All right, that's everything for lesson three, module three. Now go print your light box and come back to module four where we install the LEDs.